Over the next few videos, we'll be tackling a hands-on mini project using the latest version of Playwright. And since at the time of this recording, Cricket World Cup is going on, so I thought why not go ahead and write some automation test on the Cricket World Cup site. So let's take a look at what we will be covering in the next few videos. So we will begin with setting up a project from scratch and writing our initial test. Then we will learn the basics of interacting with web elements and understanding assertions within Playwright. After that, we will tackle the challenge of iterating over multiple elements, which is usually a bit complex. Then we will learn how to interact with tables and rows. And here we will also cover how to assert CSS properties. Then we can explore techniques for automating scenarios involving new tabs and effective page management. Towards the end, we will implement the page object model to enhance the structure of our test. Lastly, we will examine the functionality of Playwright's new UI mode. In this series, I will start each video by outlining a specific scenario. I encourage you to first try tackling the scenario on your own based on my explanation before watching the solution. This approach will help you identify areas where your skills might need improvement, allowing you to focus on these aspects more effectively. Remember, since we are working with the live site, some of the UI might change. Your goal should be to adopt and find similar flows that fit the scenario that I described. It's all about challenging yourself with different situations and not just replicating the code I demonstrate. If you find yourself stuck, don't worry, you can always watch the video for a detailed walkthrough or reach out in the Q&A section where I'm more than happy to assist. So there are lots of useful tips and tricks coming in the upcoming videos. So make sure to like and subscribe to stay updated. All right, let's not wait any longer. Let's dive in and start playing with Playwright. So I will see you in the next one. So the very first thing we're gonna start off is doing our project setup from scratch. So you're gonna go ahead and install Playwright on your machine. Once Playwright is installed and set up, you're gonna go ahead and start writing your first test. So as part of your first test, you're gonna go to the official website, which you're gonna be using. In this case, I'm gonna use the Cricket World Cup site. So let me pull that up over here. All right, so this is the site we're gonna be using, cricketworldcup.com. So in your first test, you have to simply go ahead and open this URL, cricketworldcup.com, and then you have to write two assertions. The first assertion is verify that the URL contains the text cricket. So right over here, verify that the URL contains the text cricket. And second, you have to verify that the logo is visible. So it's pretty easy scenarios that if you have already been working with Playwright, this should not be too hard for you. However, if you're not really familiar how to do this, I would recommend you check out the official documentation. So you can go to Playwright and simply click on Get Started and then follow along the documentation on how you can go ahead, set up your Playwright and write your test. So good luck with this scenario. Try this out on your own and then I will show you how to do this as well. All right, so let's go ahead and implement scenario one. So I'm gonna click on Get Started. Here you can see it says you will learn how to install Playwright, what's installed, blah, blah. So we're gonna click on how to install Playwright. This is the command we need to run. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna pull up a terminal. So this is my terminal right here. So I'm gonna create a new folder. So I'm gonna call this one, let's say Playwright. Um, this is Cricket World Cup. So maybe we can do CWC, which is Cricket World Cup. And I think that's good enough. Then I will CD into this, PW, CWC. All right, now let's simply paste that command, npm init playwright at latest, and I'm gonna hit enter. Now here you can see it's asking me whether I want to go ahead and use TypeScript or JavaScript. Let me zoom this in. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna use TypeScript, so I'm gonna select that. Where do you want to put your end-to-end -end tests? So I'm gonna select the default location. Do I want a GitHub action workflow? I do not, so I'm gonna keep it false install Playwright browsers, it can be done manually. I'm gonna say, yeah, go ahead and install them. So it will go ahead and install all the necessary dependencies that I will need, as well as install all of the browsers. Perfect, so this part is done. Now let's open this up in an IDE. In my case, I'm gonna be using VS Code. So I will open that up in VS Code and I have a shortcut for it by simply doing code dot. In your case, you can simply pull up VS Code and then open this folder. All right, so this is my new Playwright project. Here you can see I have my test. So they have already added this example spec and you also have some example uh, over here tests that they add in for the to-do app. Now I don't really need this. I can go ahead and delete it. I don't need this example spec as well, so I can delete this as well. 
Everything else is right over here. So you're going to have your config file. So right here is my config. So you can see we have our test directory test. We have all of our projects as in the browsers. Those are covered here as well. And then you can also see the reporters over here as well. These are all the configuration that you have for Playwright. We won't really have to worry about it too much here right now. Now, I have covered all of this in detail in my Playwright course. So if you want, you can check that out. I will add the link for that in the description below where I will go into all of these things in detail. So if you're using VS Code, before you start writing your first test, I want you guys to go ahead and install a Playwright extension. So here, go to Extensions and simply type in Playwright. Within that, you're going to see something called a Playwright Runner right here. So there's, you're going to find two of them. One is the Playwright test for VS Code. You can install this one as well as install another one, which is Playwright Runner by Kaushik Chatterjee. So install both of these ones, and I will show you how to use them in a while. In my case, it's already installed, so I don't need to install this. In your case, you can simply click on the Install button, and then you should see Disable or Uninstall. OK, once this is done, let's go ahead and start writing a new test. So in the test, I'm going to do new file. And then I can name this one, let's say home.spec.ts. Make sure you do .spec.ts just to identify that this is a spec file or a test file. So follow the same extension, home.spec.ts. Now right here, we can go ahead and start writing our test. So in Playwright, we can start writing a test by simply doing test. And then you can add in the brackets. Within the bracket, add in your test name. The very first test name is verify the URL and the logo. Now, right here, I'm going to go ahead and do some playwright related stuff. So, here, first of all, create a new function, arrow function. All right, so this is how a test, a base test is created. Now, you can see there's an error. It's saying cannot find name test. Do you want to install type? It's saying because we need to import test from playwright library. So, let's do that. So, I'm going to do import. And then simply add in test here from and from where do we want? We want it from playwright test. So let's add that in. Perfect. You can see we do no longer see that error. And you can read over here as well that these tests are executed in playwright environment that launches the browser and provides a fresh page to each test. Now that's interesting thing saying it's providing a fresh page. So with each playwright test, you're essentially running an, it in incognito session. That means each page will have its own context. So you can run them in parallel and they would not really clash with each other. Now, don't worry if you're not too that familiar with how Playwright works. We can get into that in a bit. So first of all, we have to go ahead and set up our page. So here, I'm going to say this is going to be a sync function since Playwright works with asynchronous code. And then I'm going to add in the curly brackets. Within the curly brackets, I'm going to add in page. Now, this is Playwright page. It is basically like giving me access to that particular browser or that session. So I'm going to say, hey, page.go to this URL, page.do XYZ. If you have used other libraries, we do similar things over there as well. WebDriver.io uses something called browser. Selenium will do driver. It's pretty much the same thing. Now, let's go ahead and write our first test. I'm going to do await page.go to. And as you can see, the moment I do page. Dot, I can see all of my methods coming up over here automatically because I'm using an IDE. So I'm going to do go to and which particular URL I want to go to. In this case, the URL I want to go to is the Cricket World Cup site. So let me just copy paste that over here. There you go. And that's pretty much it. Let's try to run this and see how it works. Now, by the way, to run this, you're going to, if you have installed the extensions, you're going to see this two button right here. One is this little green one. One is this one over here. So if I click on this green one, let's run this and see what we get. You can see here it's saying running one test using one worker and one passed. There you go. So my test is passing successfully, and I can even see how long it took to run this particular step. I can do the same thing using this button as well, execute playwright test, and we're going to see the difference. With this one, you can see here I'm doing npx playwright test home spec.ts. So it's actually showing me which command it's running, and this one is running in three tests using three workers. That means it's running it in all three browsers. So three browsers are set up in my configuration. I think it's by default Firefox, Safari, as well as Chrome. So it ran in all three browsers. The reason I like this particular extension is because I can see the command that's trying to run, which is helpful because obviously in future, I need to know what these commands are. This one kind of does it behind the scene. 
And I can also kind of customize this as I want to. So right now I cannot see the browser being open. So let's go ahead and make that change so I can actually see the browser being running as well. All right, so over here in config, we can go ahead and simply make this change. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is it's trying to run test on all three browsers. I only care about Chrome for now. So I'm gonna comment this part out. So it's only gonna run test on Chrome. And for Chrome, I'm gonna say that do not run it in headless browser. So for that, I can add a comma right here and just do headless equals false. So basically it will look something like this. I'm saying use Chrome browser. And then within that, make sure to use device desktop Chrome and then headless should be set to false. So now if I go back and try to run my test, I'm gonna click on this again. You will see a browser will open up. There you go. So it's opening up the Chromium browsers. It opened up my website and my test is successfully working. Perfect. So we can now go ahead and add in our assertion. So the very first assertion I'm gonna add in is that the page URL contains cricket. So with Playwright, you can use expect assertion. So you have to import that first. So I'm gonna say expect. And then right here, I can say expect. Now, what do we wanna expect? I'm gonna say that my page URL, so I can do page.url. This will return me the URL of the page. And I'm gonna say it should contain. So I have all of the assertions right here. The moment I do expect dot, you can see all the assertions are coming up right here, which is quite handy. So I'm gonna say contain. So let's say if I don't even know what that particular command is, I can simply type in contain and you can see it says to contain. So I'm gonna use that one. And within that, I can add in my expected string. So the expected string is cricket. So that's my first assertion. Let's quickly try to run this to make sure this is working successfully. There you go, my test passed. Now, one of the main things with assertions is always try to fail it to make sure it fails for the right reason. Here, I added an S, so it should technically fail. So let's try to run it again. And there you go, my test failed, and I got this particular uh, report being shown up. It's saying, hey, you the received was this thing and expected was crickets, which is not exactly inside the URL. So that means it's working successfully. Now, another thing with Playwright is, guys, it will automatically open up this report, and it's quite nice. You can see which browser it is, what is the test name, what line number it is. So you see all of those details right here. Plus, you can see the exact test tab that failed as well. So that's quite nice. It generates it report automatically for you. You do not have to do any of this integration on your own. Now let's go back to our test. I'm gonna fix this again. And here you can see it's saying serving HTML report, press control C to quit. So I'm gonna quit this. Now the next assertion we're gonna add is to verify our logo is visible. So for that, we need to first find the element or find that logo element. So let's go back to Chrome. And here I'm gonna go to the website. And here I'll just do right click inspect. If you guys use selector hubs for your inspecting the elements, feel free to use that. If you don't wanna use that, you can simply go ahead and just directly find it over here as well. So in this case, let's say over here, my logo class logo has a class of global navigation logo. So I can copy this, search for that. And you can see right here that this is my class for that logo. So I simply wanna make sure that this is visible. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to VS Code again. And right here, I'm gonna say await, expect not to find a locator in Playwright, you can do, or basically to find that element, you can do page.locator, and then you actually add in the locator selector. So in this case, the selector is this particular thing right here, global navigation logo. Now, finally, at the end, I'm gonna say it should be visible. And you can see the moment I do that, I have different option, disable, editable, empty, enable, falsy. Uh, in my case, I wanna make sure it's visible. So let's find that. So to be visible, there you go. That's the one we need. And that's it. So I'm gonna say, hey, make sure that this element is visible, which is the element for my logo. Let's run this again to make sure this works. And look at that, my test successfully passed. You can again try to fill this to make sure it actually fills for the right reason. But in my case, I'm gonna leave it as it is. Now, one thing you're gonna see is I'm adding a weight here. Well, the reason for that is over here, the to be visible uses a promise. Anytime a particular element or command uses a promise, you're gonna have to await for that promise. I go through how async await works or how promises work in my 
YouTube series. So if you want, I can add the link for that in the description below and you can check it out. So that's why in this case, if I go to dot to contain, there is no promise being used. So I don't have to add await over here. In fact, if I add it, it would just be redundant. So that's why even for, let's say over here, go to, we use this a promise, add it in await. For to be visible, use the promise, add it in await. This is something you will know if you're using um, a particular command that uses promise, you're gonna have to throw in await, otherwise your test won't really work properly. Or you might get false positives. All right, so that was our scenario one. We set up our project. We verified the URL and the logo is there for this Cricket World Cup site. So that's all for now. Let's move on to our next scenario.